Hey there, so this is our first little art video and I wanted to start it off by going over our supplies and how to care for them so they last throughout the year or maybe even longer. And then we're gonna do a little bit of stuff with um, like the intro to drawing, okay? So uh, I know you're excited to get started, but just hang tight. So first we have our uh, sketchbooks here. Now these are mixed media sketchbooks and if you feel the paper you can feel that it's quite a bit thicker than your typical printer paper now just because we have um this paper it doesn't mean that we cannot you know still use printer paper for other kinds of drawings or whatever paper you have for drawings but this paper is really cool because you it's Mixed media means you can use different types of materials and this will stay together with watercolor. When we use watercolor, the paper gets wet and sometimes paper like printer paper will start to fall apart. You've probably seen that before where it gets those like little wads of uh, like paper fiber, but this will hold together better. So um, we want to, we only have so many pages in our sketchbook. So we want to try to, if we're going to do like a lot of pencil drawings, we might want to use something else for that, but you can do some of that in here. But we also want to just sort of like respect the value of it. Um, so we also, I'm sure you have a pencil. This is just a regular pencil. Um, and we'll use that. Those are great tools. I also included a roll of tape in your little kit. And that tape is not a toy it's for our sketchbook so sometimes when we use um water the paper can it's called buckling when it sort of like dries like this and then all the water will start to pool here and then all your color will slide down into this puddle so if we have tape we can keep it flat another use for it is um if we wanted to it's called masking if we wanted to cover up an area where we're going to have a tree trunk and then cover up some branches or something like that with the masking tape then we can paint on top of this whole area including in between the branches and make like a beautiful sunset or something like that and then we can peel the tape away and it'll leave that area white so that's called masking tape and it's really cool so please don't lose this tape um, keep it with your art supplies and don't let it get wet because if it gets wet it'll get kind of weird and uh, not work as well all right so you also depending on your grade probably have either crayons or colored pencils um just keep these organized if you have the pencils make sure you have a pencil sharpener as well if you don't i mean you'll be fine but uh eventually you'll want to sharpen them but most of them come pre-sharpened try to keep your whole set together and uh, that way you you won't lose any of them and then be like oh no I have no orange um, and then finally our watercolors it's wrapped in plastic so we can go ahead and take that plastic off and so let me just give you a little tour of this so you open it up like that be gentle if you are really rough these hinges might break and then it'll be hard to close later on um, there's a included paintbrush in here that you can pop out like that now every artist uh, knows that you got to really take care of your paint brushes that means if you're using it in your paint and then you stop painting you need to go clean out your brush in um, the sink also if you leave your cup in water or sorry leave your brush in water the wood will start to fall apart and then this part can come off so please take good care of your brush also here are your paints now we've all had that situation where <laughs> you get like black in your yellow and then your yellow never looks very clean so what i recommend doing and we'll talk about it again is using this tray over here to mix your colors so if i wanted to make for example a like a limey green and i want to use my yellow and my green to do that what i would do is i would take my brush dip it in some water like in a cup of water scoop up some water put the wet brush in my yellow swirl it around using my yellow first to sort of protect it because that's the most easily uh, ruined color 
and then putting that yellow paint over here on my plastic tray until I have enough that I want, so I keep repeating that. Then I can go um, back into my cup, swish out my brush, and then go into my green, pick up some green, and then add it in a separate little puddle. And then once I have enough green, then I can start mixing those two puddles together. And then my paint is still clean, you know? I won't have a bunch of green in my yellow or yellow in my green because we wanna be able to use this kit all year. Um, also keep in mind, if you use your brush and like scoop the paint out, big chunks will fall out. And then if you're out, you know, you might have to find some other way to get some paint. So just try to take care of your supplies. Another thing I wanted to mention before we get started is um, when you're using, um, like a, a cup for your water. Um, this is a little anecdote. So we have this cute little teacup here. It, this was a gift. And then one day we decided, oh, we'll use that for a painting party and then uh, we'll clean it out. And then <laughs> look what happened. It never really got clean. It just is like forever an art cup now. So please ask your parents what kind of cup they would like you to use. It might be maybe like an old yogurt container or maybe like something that they don't mind getting ruined but I'll <laughs> as you can tell I'm pretty bummed that my cute little teacup is now um, an art cup forever so uh, just take care of your stuff uh, make sure you don't lose any of your supplies keep it organized and keep it clean and uh, yeah that's our little tour of our art supplies um, okay let's get started so um, I know some of us have some different materials, but what we're going to talk about today is line, all right? So when you're drawing with a pencil, what you want to do is hold really close to the tip. Now you notice I have my, my fingers pinching here like this, and then I have a, this finger here as backup, and it's resting here on this part of my hand. If you were to hold your pencil up here, it's really hard to control where that tip is going. And often when you're drawing, you really want to be specific about where that tip is going. So just as a sort of warm up, we're going to practice using different amounts of pressure with our hand. But if I push really hard on this piece of paper, it might dent this piece of paper. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to lift up all of my paper. So now all the other papers, are over here underneath the cover over there and then this paper is just almost directly on my table like that okay that way I can push really hard and it's not going to dent my other paper so I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to go really hard and then go generally softer really hard and then soft really hard and then softer. Now you'll notice here these lines are getting from going from dark to very faint. That's a useful thing. Oh and I forgot to mention the way I'm teaching art this year it's not just like we're all going to do a directed drawing together. We're going to learn some skills that help you become a better artist. I've taken a few art classes in college and I've learned some skills online and I've met so many adults who say oh I'm not good at art but art is like anything else you have to practice and you have to know the skills and you have to know some strategies and then you can do what you want. If you just think that people who are good at art are just born with it, um, you're really cutting yourself out of something really cool. If you could just take some time and practice some skills, you'll be able to do some cool stuff with art. So go ahead. And today we're going to use this whole page, but we're going to use a couple different supplies. We're going to use some colored pencils if you have them or crayons if you have them. And we're going to practice controlling our pencil. So you can try going hard and then light and then hard again. You can try going in a loop hard and then light again like that. Try a couple different things. You're focusing on how you're holding your pencil and how you are pushing. Now, um, you can also try 
if you have a a marker like this the angle at which you hold the marker will change the shape of the line so this is I mean there's a tons of different markers but uh, this is just a random one that I have so you can have a thin little point like that thin little line but if you hold it sideways it's a thicker line so you can practice doing the thinnest possible and then thick all right now I'm going to start with um, a crayon now crayons are such crazy cool tools I'm going to grab a blue and I'm going to try the same thing. I'm going to go hard and then softer. And look at how the crayon looks so different. It's the exact same color crayon, but look at the difference between that and that. Now you can try hard and soft, hard and soft. What about hard and soft and hard and soft like that okay now we're gonna try doing a larger shape so we're gonna go hard in this whole chunk right here and then gradually go a little bit softer and you can see what we've done here just with the pressure in our hand we've created a gradient. See how it went from dark to soft? I like to label my notes. Hard, dark, gentle, soft, light. pretty neat isn't it okay now I'm gonna try with a colored pencil use this green I'm gonna try the same thing and by the way I want to know I put my crayon back in my box and I'm gonna close the lid of my box so I don't lose my crayons so I have that beautiful blue again instead of it hiding under my desk okay so I'm going to now try using the tip of the pencil, the tip hard with the pencil, and then shifting to using the side of the pencil. Ooh, look at that. That's interesting, isn't it? And you can see, you can almost see the texture of my table coming through, or maybe the texture of the paper. That's an interesting effect, and that's something that an artist might choose to use. So you can try going hard, a little more gentle, a little more gentle, 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 gentle. Now you might decide, Mrs. Smith, I just love the look of this crayon, but this colored pencil, not my thing. Or you might think the other thing, the other way around. As an artist, you get to decide how you want your art to look and which materials are better. So let's label this. This is colored pencil. And this was crayon. And this was marker. And this was pencil. Now I'm kind of running out of space on this paper, but I'm because this is a practice page, I'm going to try to fill up all these empty spaces. I want to make the most out of my sketchbook. So now I'm going to go back in. I'm going to try doing some of the shading with a regular pencil like that. So I'm going to use this space over here. I'm going to try hard. And then getting softer and softer and softer. And sometimes I'm adjusting the grip that I have in my hand. So I can have a lot of control over my pencil. I can go back over and do this area a little bit harder. So it's even more of a drastic change. 
Look at that. So I hope your imagination is starting to um, bubble with things that you could do just with the things that we practiced today. Pushing hard with the pencil, pushing soft with the pencil, using the edge of a marker, using the tip of a marker. Going from a hard to a light pressure, changing the, this is technically called the value, we'll talk about that later, of a uh, crayon and in a colored pencil. Now, you might be wondering, what about the watercolors? So, the thing about watercolors, the, the depth in value, the amount of like darkness a color could have, doesn't have to do with how hard you push your brush. So, if you push, if you have a certain amount of paint on your brush and you push really hard, all you'll do is you'll damage your brush. We're going to have a whole bunch of lessons on watercolor later, but I just want to be very clear. These materials have, um, like the color pencils have a sort of wax on the inside. Crayons are made of wax. And then we call it pencil lead, but it's really graphite. All of these, um, what you're really doing is you're taking the little particles, little tiny crumbs of that material and pushing it into the paper. But with watercoloring, you're more just picking up the pigment or the paint, mixing it with water, and applying it to the paper. There's no reason to push really hard. Sometimes I see kids and they're smashing their brushes into the um, sketchbook, and it's, it's just going to ruin your brush. So don't do that. I'll show you how to make different uh, values of colors later with your watercolors, but I just wanted to clarify that little snippet for us. Okay, so I hope you filled your whole page with um, practice. If not, go ahead and fill in any of these funny little gaps that you may have. Please do not go um, onto the back yet. You can see some of my marker bled through but my other stuff didn't really bleed through. That's an important note, but we're just going to fill up this page for now, and then we'll do more next time. All right, thanks for joining me. See you later. Bye-bye.